Right, students, we're going to have a quick look at human genetic disorders. Important to remember that these, some of these will use the inheritance patterns we looked at in the last section, so you need to remember and maybe review those inheritance patterns. So it's important to remember that genetic disorder is caused by a mutation. We got two main types of mutations. The first one, we'll call type A, is a gene mutation. This is a change in a gene not in a large chromosome. So that would be like if I had me some A, C, T, A, C, C, G, A, C, and so on, that I would actually maybe change this string right here, the A, C, T, A, into maybe a G, C, A, T, and then continue on C, C, G, A, C. That would be the kind of mutation in the first type. Consider this a small mutation, and we cannot see this kind of mutation in a carrier type. Type B is a chromosome mutation, and a chromosome mutation is a large-scale mutation because we are going to have an extra chromosome, too few chromosomes, or perhaps a broken chromosome. Now, a chromosome could have thousands of genes on it, so it causes a huge amount of change in the person who has this disorder. So we can have too many or too few chromosomes, or we can have a broken chromosome. And we call a broken chromosome a change in structure, and too many or too few a change in number. So those are the two main types. So we need to remember these two types of mutations that cause all these genetic disorders. So now we'll move on and get to the specifics. First one we're going to look at is cystic fibrosis. We've talked about this guy quite a bit because we talked about gene therapy that's effective for it. It is caused by a recessive allele, just plain dominant or recessive. So to get cystic fibrosis, if A is the normal gene, you have to get little a, little a in order to have cystic fibrosis. And it causes thick mucus, which is very difficult for the person afflicted to cough, uh, cough out. So a person with this will eventually get a disease like pneumonia or something because they're unable to clear their lungs of bacteria and things. So, cystic fibrosis, it's a recessive allele on one chromosome, and it's a result of a mutation in a single gene, that was type A we looked at just a second ago, where three bases were deleted. So, that's cystic fibrosis. Next one we're going to look at is sickle cell. Sickle cell is extremely common in Mediterranean areas and places around the equator because the sickle cell allele, if you were here, you recall that sickle cell causes trouble, but if you're a carrier of sickle cell, it prevents malaria. And that's why this hangs around so well. Usually things that cause trouble are less frequent, <clears throat> but because there's an advantage to being a carrier of this, it is more common very frequently. So, this is a codominant allele. Where a carrier is healthy, and remember that a carrier also resists malaria. That probably won't be on the test. But somebody with two sickle cell alleles gets misshapen blood cells. And because they're misshapen, they carry less oxygen. And because they're misshapen, they also tend to clump and cause clots. And so they clog blood vessels. So a person who has sickle cell 
They can't do as much physical activity because their blood cannot supply as much oxygen. And of course, clogging the blood vessels because these things have weird shapes. They're kind of jagged and will hook onto things. So, that is sickle cell, a codominant allele, where you have to have two to be afflicted. Now, in this next one, we have hemophilia. Hemophilia is a sex-linked recessive trait. So it's on the X chromosome, which means it inherits just like color blindness. So we have our sex-linked recessive trait, like color blindness. But this is much less common than color blindness because it causes people, you know, to live a shorter life sometimes. Not so much anymore because we can treat it very well with extra clotting factors, but it does occur much less frequently than these other traits. So somebody who has a carrier of hemophilia has the recessive. Somebody who is normal has this dominant allele. So Males will get it much more frequently because, uh, recall, a male does not have a backup X chromosome, whereas a female can have the big H and the little h, and she is a carrier but does not have hemophilia. So males get this more frequently because it is sex-leaked. What this causes is your blood clots slowly or not at all. So people who have this can die of very minor injuries that would not be a big deal to people who have normal blood. Now, Down syndrome is the last one we're going to talk about. Down syndrome is a change in chromosome number. And Down syndrome is always an extra copy of chromosome 21. So you have three copies of chromosome 21. Now, what this causes is mild to moderate mental handicap. Usually people with Down syndrome can be very functional, hold down jobs, and live on their own. But they will have some mental changes. We will have physical changes. Their bodies are shaped a little bit differently. They will have a little bit of trouble talking because their tongue may be shaped a little bit differently. And they may have heart defects. So we'll focus on the heart defects because they may have them, but they may not. So because this is a chromosome mu mutation, you end up with lots of extra genes because thousands of genes are on that 21st chromosome. So we end up with a lot of physical and other changes in the person when they have an extra copy like this. So that is Down syndrome, extra copy of chromosome 21. But people who have this are usually highly functional and do quite well even though they have it. Now, we're going to look at a pedigree. A pedigree is basically a family tree, but instead of showing who, we're showing what traits or alleles they may carry. So it's a family tree for traits. Oops ahead of myself. And in this family tree, we make females are circles, males are squares in our chart, and when we draw a couple, we always of course have to have a male and a female, and we connect them with this line attached to the middle here and here. If these people have children, we draw a line down from the line that joins them, and let's say they have three children, we're going to attach the children at the top of their symbols. So there's a child that's a female, a child that's a male, and let's put just another male child here. So when we have a pedigree, people who are carriers of a trait will be halfway shaded, people who are having a trait will be completely shaded. So let's do this one for hemophilia because it's sex-linked. 
So let's say dad does not have hemophilia, so we're going to leave dad totally unchanged, but mom is a carrier. So we fill her in halfway. <coughs> let's say that this girl down here gets mom's hemophilia allele, so she's a carrier. This boy here gets mom's hemophilia allele, but because it's sex-linked, he has the trait. Remember, he does not have a backup X. And this boy here, let's say that he got the non-hemophilia half of mom, so we're going to leave him unchanged because he is not a carrier and he is not afflicted. So that's how we do a pedigree. Half-filled, like here, is a carrier. Completely filled is somebody who has and is showing the trait. Remember, males for sex-linked traits will not be half-filled, but for other traits, you can have your males half-filled. It's only for sex linkage where we only have completely filled males. Now, brings us up to managing genetic disorders. And when we're managing genetic disorders, when somebody has something that they may not have been aware of, simply knowing what they have and how to treat it is a big thing. So education lets you deal with an affliction or a condition. If you don't know why you're getting sick all the time, because you may have inherited celiac disease, which lets you not eat wheat, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. But as soon as you understand what's going on because you've been educated, you know not to eat wheat, you'll be very healthy. Then we'll have things like job training. People may have mental handicaps, but with a different kind of job training, they will hold down a job very well. We may have medical care, such as medicines. You may be missing just a single enzyme, and we can provide that to you in a pill. And we want to mention gene therapy. Of course, it's not in your book, because at the time, gene therapy didn't look like it was going to work, but now it's working great. We've cured the blindness of children with gene therapy. We're treating cystic fibrosis with gene therapy, and we're going to see many more gene therapies coming up very, very soon. So these are just some techniques of dealing with it once you got it. Finding out if you got it, or if you might give it to your child, may involve a karyotype. A karyotype is a picture of the chromosomes in your cell. So it shows your chromosomes. So you can see if you have an extra chromosome. You can see if you have too few. You can see if one is broken. But we cannot see, when we're going to put this up here, it does not show changes to genes or alleles. You cannot see small changes and small mutations. So it's great to see if you have too many or too few chromosomes, but to say that you don't have uh, a certain allele or to see if you're going to be blonde or brown-haired, that is not possible. Changes to genes or alleles will not show up in a karyotype. Next one is genetic counseling. This could be a very good field to get into, because if a couple is going to have a child, they will want to make sure that child has the best chance of being healthy, healthy as possible. So, a genetic counselor will help a person couple calculate odds that their child may have a disorder. If the odds are extremely likely that a very dangerous disorder may come up, then they may be advised to adopt a child rather than have their own. Now we used to use pedigrees and karyotypes and such like that, but now a genetic test, and I believe you can get these at Walgreens now, do a cheek swab, send it in, and they'll tell you if you are a carrier for sure for many of these traits rather than just having to do the 50-50 probability of doing pedigrees and things like that. So a genetic test, which you can now get done pretty cheap, has really changed the landscape of genetic testing in medicine. So we can check and see exactly what you're carrying and see if it's likely that you'll give that to your kids or not. And of course your genetic counselor may say you're going to have this disorder, but it's not a big deal because it's easily treatable. So it's important to keep in mind all these techniques and the changing landscape. And we'll be on with the next section in just a few minutes.